It's not a love song. It's a sad song. The sex. How is it that we are going to deal with those persons that does not decide to pay light bills? I am a white-haired woman. I am very, I am very young. I'm just 16 years old. And trust me, when I get my light bill, Lord help me when I go down to JPS. I have to make arrangement with JPS to pay my bills. Just can't bother with that no more. Same bread for you, the same for me. While we make them live in a luxury. Them while we burn and dead. Member of Parliament for West Rural St. Andrew, the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn. Caretaker for West Rural St. Andrew, Ms. Jennifer Housen. Counselor for the Brandon Hill Division, Mr. Gareth Walker. President and CEO of JPS, Mr. Emmanuel DeRosa. Other members of the utility companies in Jamaica, residents of this section of the island, good evening. My name is Elizabeth Bennett Marsh and I am the Public Education Specialist at the Office of Utilities Regulation. And we're here this evening as part of what we call our Parish Connections Outreach Series. We've been going across the island. We have been to 12 parishes and we've saved Kingston and St. Andrew for last. This is our final activity. So all events culminate with this activity here this evening. It's an attempt on our part to connect with you, the residents, and to put you in direct contact with the utility companies. So we have brought out not just the utility companies per se, but we have brought out senior executives in the utility companies to hear them, um, to have them hear your concerns and for you, you to put your questions to them because they value your input. Because without you, they would not be able to have a viable business. Am I correct? All right, so this evening we're hoping for good things. We're hoping for good dialogue uh, so that at the end of the evening you can feel that it was, a wor it was worth your time to come out. At this time, I'll introduce members of the head table. I'm missing two. One is not here yet, but one is here. Another one is here, but I don't see him. He's always so busy. But to my immediate right is our guest speaker for the evening. And I want to hear, you know, how, how we welcome them, right? I was told that this section of the island is a very warm. The community members are very warm. Especially my Mount James people. They were here from early. Right? Mount James? All right. So Mr. Emmanuel DeRosa is our guest speaker this evening. And he's the president and CEO of JPS. Can we welcome him? Marcel Hurt Davis is the Network Services Director of Flow. The Regional Communications Manager at Digicel will be the speaker on behalf of Digicel this evening, Elon Parkinson. I know he's here. I saw him. He's probably just busy outside and he'll be joining us shortly. And is it NWC now joining us? So I will introduce Marvin Hamilton. He is the plant engineer for the Kingston and St. Andrew Division of the National Water Commission. So as you can see, we have Flow, we have Digicel, we have NWC, and we have JPS, and you have the OUR. It's going to be a beautiful evening. At this time, I will ask the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn to bring greetings. Can we welcome... MP Flynn. Thank you so much, Ms. Liz Bennett. Marsh, when I met you first, um, you were just Liz Bennett. So um, congratulations on that addition. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I was really expecting to see way more people here this evening, but I guess some are still on their way. Let me say a pleasant evening to Ms. Jennifer Housen caretaker for West Royal St. Andrew, and of course, members of the head table, a pleasant evening to you. Um, moderator, president of JPS, Mr. Emmanuel DeRosa, who's going to be the guest speaker of this evening's town hall meeting. And let me not forget, I know I saw Gareth Walker somewhere around. There he is. 
Um, good evening to you, Mr. Walker, who is the counselor for the Brandon Hill Division. Members of NWC, members of SDC, I know that they've been an integral part of this, of course. Um, Flo, the OUR, JPS, a pleasant afternoon to you all. And of course, a pleasant afternoon to all the members and community members of West Royal St. Andrew. It's really an honor and privilege of mine to serve the people of West Royal St. Andrew as their member of parliament. I must say that I'm grateful for this town hall meeting because often we hear of complaints, a lot of them are directed to me, and then I have to go back and have meetings with the respective persons to come back to you, the residents, to tell you what is happening. So I'm very pleased that this evening you can put your questions um, to the persons here to the various utility agencies and give them an opportunity um, for all your concerns to be aired. I want to thank the OUR in particular for seeing the need to have this forum so that the people of West Rural can get their answers um, and the frequently asked questions, as said, and service delivery and make recommendation. What is even more pleasing is to see um, all of you here, as I said, this evening, but I hope more people will attend this forum, especially once um, the persons here we have um, at the front, so that you, persons can ask their questions. Um, I want to inform you, the residents of West Rural St. Andrew, that I pledge to give 100% support to both constituents and the utility companies to make business easier for all. I will continue, of course, to lobby for street lights with our councillors in the areas that is needed. Um, portable water, I know that one community, Brandon, um, in Bowden Hill, they have not had portable water, and that is being put in place right now by, um, with NWC. And so um, Florence Hill, who was having some issues also with water, I was able to have dialogue with the vice president of NWC who came to the community members, spoke with them, um, and of course is currently addressing that problem. So I know that it works when you speak with a representative and hear your grouse, they will be able to answer you um, in a timely manner. Of course, the flow and Digicel, I'm hoping that you expand your network so that the areas without internet will be retrofitted so our citizens, and especially our children who have to do homework, etc., have to use the internet, that they will also be better served. I will, of course, sit here. I'm not feeling too great. I'm, I have the flu. I'm still trying to get over that. But I will spend some time with you this afternoon to make sure that I also take notes as to some of your questions and to see how best I can also assist. I want to thank you again for coming out and I want to thank the different utility companies and I want to thank the OUR for bringing this town hall meeting. I guess they saved the best for last, West Rural St. Andrew. Um, to listen to you, the people. And I want, I know a lot of times you have questions and you don't get a chance to ask them. I'm going to implore you this evening to get up in front of the microphone and ask those questions because even when you come to me, I still have to go to them to get an answer. So it's best this evening to bring the questions to the people who can answer best this evening. Have an enjoyable evening and I thank you so much. Talk a bit about what the OUR does in your interest. So the OUR um, regulates your major utility services and we all know what the major utility services are, right? So we know the major sectors are the water sector, the electricity sector, and the telecommunication sector. And the major utility companies under those um, sectors are the Jamaica Public Service Company Limited, the National Water Commission, Flow, and Digicel. And of course, there are also small providers. For example, Kankara, DEML, they provide water to residents in various sections of the island as well. So, um, so we regulate them, and what do I mean by the fact that we regulate them? We ensure that they 
uh, maintain services and acceptable quality of service to you, the customers. Um, it, it must be consistent. You must have an expectation that you are getting your utility service in a consistent manner. Of course, we recognize that there will be instances um, that will um, indicate a disruption in your service, but you must have a reasonable expectation that if you pay your bill and you go home that you will have electricity, right? Okay. Um, we developed the framework within which the regulated entities operate. We set the rates and service standards for them, and we operate in an independent and transparent manner. Our objectives at the OUR are very simple, to ensure that consumers of utility um, company enjoy an acceptable quality of service at a reasonable cost promote the long-term provision of utility services, as I said before, and to provide an avenue of appeal to you, the residents. And I'm going to talk about that in a little while. There are various ways to seek redress if it is that you have a problem. We ask you first to go to the utility company um, with whom you have a problem. If it is that they have settled the matter and still not satisfied with how they have settled it, then you come to us. And that's what we mean by your avenue of appeal. So we want you to give them an opportunity to address your concerns first. It's only fair, right? And you, say, you can come to us and you can say, well, I give them a chance and I'm still never settled it according to how I want to settle it, so I'm going to the OUR. That doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily always settle it in your favor. But at the end of the day, you must have felt that your, your issue was dealt with fairly and in an unbiased way. And we have developed guaranteed standards for you, the customers. So you should all have copies of what we call the guaranteed standards. There's a blue pamphlet and a red pamphlet. One is for NWC, one is for JPS. And these are basic service standards to which you, the company, you, the customer, should hold your utility customers accountable. We have developed 18 guaranteed standards for Jamaica Public Service Company and 17 for the NWC. And if they are, any of them are breached to you, you are to be compensated, whether by way, whether by way of automatic compensation. This is no better. All right, okay. Whether by way of automatic compensation or you fill out a claim form to get your compensation. But you need to know about the guaranteed standards so you can hold them accountable. All right? Um, so when we talk about wrongful disconnection, when we talk about guaranteed standards, what do we mean? Wrongful disconnection, let's take that one. And that applies to the NWC and the JPS. So if it is that you... Um, are wrongfully disconnected, you know you pay your bill a week ago, and you call them and they say, oh, I never meant to come to lot 102, I really meant to go to lot 104. They acknowledge that there was a wrongful disconnection. They acknowledge that the system is showing that you have paid your bill. That's a wrongful disconnection. And that's a special compensation because it's, a, a, it's an inconvenience to you. So you are to be compensated. That's an automatic compensation to you on your next bill. If it is that they take longer than eight hours in the case of NWC and longer than five hours in the case of JPS to reconnect you after a wrongful disconnection, then that's another compensation. If it is that you know that you really never pay your bill, but you, are you pay a part of it and they disconnect you, you go and you pay everything that's outstanding, including any reconnection fee, and you have waited 24 hours in the case of NWC and JPS, and you still have not got back your light or water, then that's another breach, and you are to be compensated. How many estimated bills should you get back to back? Somebody said two. No, somebody said none. That's, that, that would be ideal, right? <laughs> somebody said one. The, the, the number of consecutive estimated bills that you should expect to get, providing JPS has access to your meter, is two. If it is that you get a third estimated bill the next month, then that's a breach, and you are to be compensated. 
So that's why we want you to get familiar with your guaranteed standards. So please do not throw away the brochures. Please go and just keep it in your house so that if anything, get acquainted with it. So if anything comes up, you can always go back to it and make reference to it. And when we say automatic compensation, we mean that you do not have to claim. But we urge you to be aware of what the breach is so that you can call them and back them up and say, listen, remember last month when I wrongfully disconnect me on this day and never come, I never come back until two days later, I don't see it on my next bill. And if you don't see it on your next bill, that's another breach. All right? So when we talk about compensation, what we're talking about, is it worth your while? In the case of JPS, if it is that there's a breach committed against you, that is $1,650 that should be credited on your next bill. And for every breach that's committed, that's $1,650. Right? For commercial customers, it's four times the customer charge. And that varies depending on the, the, the rate, whether they are rate 20 or 40 customer, etc. There's a special compensation category, and in that category is, are, in that category is like wrongful disconnection, etc. And that is two times the reconnection fee. So we're looking at over three thousand dollars for each breach that falls under the special compensation category. For NWC, uh, it's four times the service charge. So for residents, your service charge is about seven hundred and fifty-eight dollars. So four times that is over three thousand dollars. That's what you should get back for a breach. And for commercial customers, it's also four times. And of course, it varies depending on the size of the, the, the customer. There is also a special compensation category. Now, this is just a brief glimpse at some of the figures that the two utilities have had to pay out as a result of uh, breaches of the guaranteed standard. So for the period July to September last year, those are the latest figures we have right now. JPS identified that during that three-month period, they committed over 13,000 breaches to customers against the guaranteed standards. And it would have incurred a potential payout. That means that all of those breaches would have seen them paying out to over 20, almost $28 million. Because we have now converted most of JPS's guaranteed standards to automatic, which means you don't have to claim, they have paid out 100% of that to customers. All right? For, J, for NWC, they have identified that they have committed 672 breaches, which would have attracted a potential payout of $2.1 million. However, they only ended up paying out over just up over 900000 And that's because a lot of persons did not claim for the breaches. Sometimes they can't be bothered, and sometimes they really don't know. And so we feel that knowledge is power. So what are we doing for the telecom services? Uh, we have drafted a quality of standard uh, for the telecom sector where we're going to hold them more accountable in a similar manner that we do for the JPS and the NWC. And we're expecting that to come on stream this year. Some recent actions by the OUR. Sometimes we take decisions that are that is in your interest, but you may not be aware of it. So do you know that we have another error code for Jamaica? Yes? Who can tell me what that area code is? 658. And what is the implication for you come May 31 this year? You'll have to dial 10 digits, right? So we have identified that in another few years, Jamaica will run out of numbers under the 876 number. And so in preparation for that, we have got another area code so that whenever numbers run out under the 876 code, we have the 658. But the immediate implication for you is that come May 31, you're going to have to start dialing the 876 in front of numbers that you want to, um, you're dialing out. And we're getting you into that behavior change because once the 658 comes in, it's very, very likely that your number will also be under the 658. Somebody will have your number. And the only difference will be what? The area code. So come May 31, start dialing and start putting in 876 in your phone from now. So if you're saving numbers in your phone, 876 go in front of it. Not one. You don't need a one. Ten digits. Perfect ten. All right, we also make decisions about um, our recent decision regarding JPS's tariff application. We had developed a special category for path beneficiaries. 
So they'll be paying a little less than what residential customers pay. So please talk to JPS about that. And we also developed a new rate class for mega companies. Does anybody know what number portability is? I hear a bright spark. Nice. So on the number portability, which came in June 2015, you can now switch your telephone service provider and keep your number. Because, you know, sometimes you're disgruntled with them for years. Every time anybody comes to your house, the first thing you do is complaining about your service, right? But you don't want to change your number because everybody has your number. Now we're saying we're putting power in your hands. You can now switch to another service provider, your mobile phone to another mobile provider, your landline to another landline provider, and keep your number. So nobody will know that you have even changed. All right, so Parish Connections, as I said before, we realized that consumers were not always aware about their rights and responsibilities. We want to put you in direct contact with your utility providers as well as the OUR. Uh, we want to educate you more about what we do, and we want you to share information about how we can improve our service to you, the customers, because we find that is very important. So we started in 2015, and since then we have been on the road since March 2015. Uh, the OUR um, heads it in conjunction with JPS, Digicel, NWC, Flow, and the Consumer Affairs Commission. After today, we still want to hear from you. Our contact details are at the back of all the brochures that you have, so please feel free to contact us. Photos from today will be on our social media pages. Uh, Instagram as well, and Facebook and Twitter. So please like us, follow us, so that you can see if we captured you in any of the shots. All right, so we are reaching out, informing, connecting. That's what we're doing with our Parish Connection series. So I've finished my presentation to you, and I'm going to invite on your program, as I'd indicated before, there's a change in the presenter from Digicel. So it will be Elon Parkinson, who is the regional uh, public relations manager. Can we warmly welcome him? OUR team, our friends from the JPS NWC, and yes, we have friends at Flow too, right? Um, and we've been on the road right across the parishes, you know, talking to everyone about the plans that we have, and of course, dealing with some hard questions about the issues as well that you face. And I'm sure many of you are here this evening to have a word or two with Digicel. Am I correct? Yes. Need a phone. All right. Lady in the front says she need a phone. Um, <laughs> let's see how best we can help you. All right. Um, but certainly you want to know about the service that we're offering here. You also want to our plans for the area and I'm here this evening to share all of that with you let me start off first of all with just looking at the map of, um, of Kingston and St. of Jamaica and in particular Kingston and St. Andrew where we're providing 99% worth of voice and data coverage and that voice and data coverage mainly has to do with of course your ability to make calls, the data now being the 4G and the LTE service that's available in other places. Going to talk to you a little bit more about LTE a little bit later on, but indeed we have 99% population coverage of both voice and data in the Kingston and St. Andrew area. Now, it would be remiss of me to come here and not tell you that we do have some issues in some areas, right? So, we're working on better coverage, and in particular, this area where we are now, in parts of Cassava River. Anyone here from Cassava River? Mount Ogle? Crookers Hill? Right. And um, some of you would have been having some challenges. We know, we understand, we've been listening, and we're going to be making some changes. All right? Our technical team, they'll be more than willing to, you know, take your questions a little bit later on. Um, so please, write them down. Let us know. We have some folks at the back as well. Our director of retail and distribution, Michelle Anderson. Our group head of customer care, Leslie Chisholm, is also here with us. And our data doctor, she's right there, spinning 360 degrees every couple of seconds, um, making a video. Her name is, uh, my gosh, I forgot your name. 
Jody. Right, just Jody. All right, Jody. I'll just call you Jody. All right, so Jody will be here to answer your questions, all things related to data, because this is really where we're going now in terms of mobile communication. It's all things data, and I'm going to show you how in a little bit. So I mentioned LTE before because as Digicel moves towards being more of a data-centric, data-oriented company, we are building a network of the future. What does a network of the future looks like, look like? First, it delivers super fast LTE mobile data. And for those of you who you know, live here, but you travel into the deeper reaches of the metropolis, you know, half a tree, Manor Park, Constant Spring, and those places, you will feel the difference of LTE technology. We've installed it, we were the first mobile network to install LTE in Jamaica. We rolled it out in June 2016. And so far, we have been rolling right across Jamaica with LTE. Now, what LTE delivers to you is a far smoother mobile data experience. So, in terms of streaming, connecting, WhatsApping, whatever you're doing, it's going to be done far much faster with LTE technology. Right now, up in this neck of the woods, you are experiencing 4G speeds in most cases. And 4G speeds in comparison to LTE, well, LTE is about 10 times faster. Just imagine the possibilities that's going to bring to your community, right? And if you think speed doesn't matter, it does. A recent World Bank study proved that when you increase megabytes to people, sorry, not megabytes, well, that too, but the speed in general, right, um, at which people use the internet, when you increase the speed, you're also opening up possibilities for people to start a business because then with faster internet connections come the ability for you to do more. And that's what LTE presents, the do more possibilities of mobile data. Digicel is first and indeed fastest when it comes on to the delivery of LTE in Jamaica. We intend to maintain that position, but not just maintaining it for maintaining its sake, maintaining it so that we're giving you the data, you the power to use the data to make your lives better. Your kids can do their homework because they have a faster connection. You can set up a little business and even take your orders that way because you're able to transmit information very quickly and in real time. So we're going to be doubling the amount of LTE sites in Kingston and St. Andrew, and that will be done by year end. So when we're finished, everybody in Kingston and St. Andrew will have an awesome LTE experience. We can talk some more about coverage a little bit later on in the Q&A if you have any questions. But I want to also move on to another aspect of your interaction with Digicel that you consider to be important and that we also want to just break it down this evening for you to share some more about it. How many of you here dial 100 to reach us at the contact center? All right. Lots of you. Right. And I hear it. I hear you dial, but you can't get through. And why? Right? Traditionally, you knew calling 100 to be the call center, you know? And, you know, the call center takes calls, right? But the face of technology is changing. Just like LTE earlier, we are told that we're moving away from the whole idea of, you know, just minutes and voice and whatever into megabytes and giving you tremendous possibilities with megabytes. You now have also additional possibilities when you call our contact center. And we'll call it a contact center because it's more than calling. It's also, it's, it's about more broadly speaking, making contact. What does making contact look like, right? Your calls, right? Um, traditionally would just be up here. You know, um, phone, that's it, you talk to somebody. Now, look at how dynamic it has become because so many of you have smartphones. By a show of hands, how many of you have smartphones in here? Smartphone owners, hands up, please. I'm sure it must be a lot more than that. All right. But look, so with your smartphone, right? With your smartphone, and importantly, with the My Digicel app, right? 
you are able to chat with an agent instead of calling, right? You're able to even reach us through social media instead of calling. You're able to even send an email instead of calling. You can even go to our website and check the knowledge base on the website to have your questions answered instead of calling. You can also go to the website and again, use the My Digicel app instead of calling, right? Getting to that in a little bit, right? Now, we have, for those customers who don't have a smartphone, but you still need to reach the contact center, the interactive voice recording option is still available for you, right? There are a lot of self-help options there if you use it. And we also have what we call the UMM menu. It's simply that little menu that pops up when you dial star 147 number sign for services, right? But again, in red, you don't have a smartphone, you can't do all these things, you can still make a call and reach an agent, all right? So we're broadening the possibilities for you. I explained to someone recently that I used the 800 number for a very popular airline to book a ticket recently, and I didn't speak to one person. It was just an interactive voice that was there asking me where I want to go, when I want to leave, gave me the options for travel, and I just kept speaking, speaking, speaking right along until I finished, paid for the ticket, and that was That's where the technology is going. That is essentially where the technology is going. I'm sure many of you, right? Back in the day when gas done on Sunday, right? You probably call up somebody and see if they can bring some gas up the hill. And now you send a WhatsApp message, right? So instead of having the gas man on speed dial, you probably just have them in your WhatsApp. And you send a message real quick and say, look, gas done, run, come. Right? That's where the technology is going. And so we really want to help you to use it some more. Join us on the social media pages. And we'll be happy to have the discussion with you about how we're going to be moving forward with a better customer care experience using the contact center. But look, that's not the only feedback you've been giving us, right? A lot of customers have been giving us feedback about data and credit. Here today, gone tomorrow morning, right? We're being honest, right? No holds barred. We're having an open, honest conversation this evening, right? And you've been speaking to us. We have been getting the feedback, social media, the contact center, right? You've written letters to the newspapers. In fact, the OUR, they've gotten in touch with us too to say, hey, customers need some clarification about these couple of things. Help us. And indeed, we jump in and provide the help and clarification to the customer, right? But Digicel doesn't just, you know, hear you talk. We also listen. It's an important component of the experience of the relationship with the customer, we have to listen, right? Because without listening, we simply can't change. And we're changing. And what does a changed Digicel look like? You haven't seen all of it yet. But so far what we've done is to address this issue where you have a smartphone, you get some credit from abroad or you add some credit now, you left your mobile data on, it accesses the network, you, you pay for mobile data at the pay-as-you-go rate of $50 per megabyte, and boops, the credit gone. Right? Thing of the past. Thing of the past. So what we've done is to make sure that you have no automatic data overages. You will not have that experience going forward. If you have your mobile data left on and you have credit, your phone is attempting to connect to the data network. You're going to get a page that comes up that says, look, you're going to connect. Do you want to? And if you want to, rate, by the way, we've dropped it from $50 per megabyte to $20 per megabyte, a whopping 60% drop, right? Because we, again, we've been listening and we've been changing, right? Thank you. Now, it's up to you if you want to pay $20 per megabyte to use the internet. Because quite frankly, you can get a far cheaper plan 
for which you could pay only something like about, in some cases, 50 cents per megabyte. Okay? And you have the option there as well. I'll tell you about those plans later on. But we've also done some other things, right? We've ensured that we, the My Digicel app, which I encourage all of you to download and use, it's very simple, very easy. That app helps you to manage your account and take control of your experience with Digicel. And that's precisely what we want you to do. Every customer must, customer must feel as if they're in control of their experience, right? So you download the My Digicel app, and you can use it to order services, to stop services, whatever. But you are in control. You track all of your usage. It's a free download. It's free to use. Whether or not you have the mobile internet service, you can still access the My Digicel app and use it, right? This is all about putting our customers in control, all right? So as we put those measures in place, it also opens up now the possibilities for us to offer you better things. And what do those better things look like? Well, we say big things are going on, right? Because we can't have you speaking, we can't have us listening, we can't have us changing, and not coming up with big things. All right? So with that, we have launched a brand new suite of data plans. And again, this comes from listening to you. So for everyone here taking a look, right? Let me just turn it a little bit for the folks on the other side right there, right? This is all from you. Between about August to November, December of last year, we've been having a bunch of listening sessions. We call them focus groups with customers, right? Where we've been constantly having chats with them to say, look, how can we create a better mobile data experience for you? We came up with $100 plans, right? So now, I mean, you can't get even a party for $100, but look, you can get a data plan for that now. And you can use it to stay connected because, again, data is a new oil, right? These amazing plans are available. You can go to our social media pages, take a look. And as you do, you can also avail yourself of amazing discounts on phones. Now, I couldn't leave here this afternoon or evening without talking about two very important things. The first one has to do with theft from our mobile sites, right? It's a real issue, real, real issue. A lot of times when you have service problems and you say, boy, the signal gone and Digicel, I mean, or even, or even Flow for that matter. This is a, it's a giant issue, right? I mean, thief now discriminate when it comes down to which cell site they go to and steal batteries, generators, and fuel, right? And sometimes even copper cables. And they don't carry much copper, but they steal it anyway, whatever they find, right? And some metal for scrap, right? Look, this hampers your ability to communicate. It's a public safety issue as well, because what it means is that when you need to make that critical phone call, JPS may have an issue with the power in the area. We can't use backup systems because they've either been stolen or damaged or otherwise compromised, right? Um, it leaves you out at sea. You can't get in touch with anybody. You have an emergency. And because of the indiscretionate behavior, behavior of somebody who went to a cell site and stole the batteries or, or the fuel, you are out of service, right? So we urge you, be on the lookout. When you see people, if you know where the cell sites are located, you see you know, some unusual activity taking place, do not hesitate to call the police, right? I'm sure many of you here have a very close relationship with the police. That's good. You should keep it that way, right? And as you do, the Stay Alert app is also an amazing way to keep in touch with the police, so I encourage all of you to download it. Before I go, the Digicel Foundation continues to do work in your community. We've spent over $800 million in Kingston and St. Andrew over the past 16 years. We will continue to be a friend in the community, certainly to Oberlin, $3.3 million. We renovated the Pigree and set up the, um, the biodigester. All right? A little later on, you'll get to ask your questions. I want to thank you again for giving me a listening ear. 
And as always, thank you for being very loyal customers of Digicel. Good evening. Thank you very much, Elon. And I did promise you that the present presentations will be short but very, very informative to you. I did not explain the format of this evening, but I think you can see it from your program where we're going to have um, members of each of the utility companies as well as OER. I've already made my presentation. They will be making short presentations and then um, afterwards we'll open up the floor for you to ask your questions. Um, MP Cosbert Flynn, I think you'll be happy to see the audience now. It has really swollen. I'm happy. <laughs> So I think I have to go fill air again while NWC loads up its presentation. What do I talk about? I don't know. Um, I hear that we have Mavis Bank. Mavis Bank is here. No? Mavis Bank not here? Or oh, there's one lone hand in the... I see two hands. All right, welcome Mavis Bank. Which other community did I not mention? What's that? Above Rocks? Above Rocks is here, nice. Essex Hall. Mannings Hill, of course. Let me hear your Mannings Hill. All right, you are in the building. Mount Salem. Mount. Yes, nice. So I'm counting 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 communities represented this evening. Isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? Can we give ourselves a round of applause? <laughs> Florence Hill is in the building. <laughs> That's all right. That's okay, miss. All right, she come up in a, excuse me. I need you to shout out Florence Hill so you can hear us. Welcome, Florence Hill. So I now throw over to the NWC's Marvin Hamilton, and he's the plant engineer for the Kingston and St. Andrew region. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Hamilton. My name is Marvin Hamilton, as the moderator has just mentioned. Um, observing our protocol. Um, we are here from NWC to... You guys hear me from at the back? You guys hear me? All right, let me try to project my voice some more. Um, the name is Marvin Hamilton. You hear me properly now? Okay, great. We are here from National Water Commission to share with you, to learn from you, first of all, your challenges that you have, and to partner with you to let that experience be a better experience. So as the, um, the slides. We're here to look at the first slide. Um, Delano. All right. This is just a overview of Kingston and Saint Andrew, and um, the arrow there does point to where we are at right now, which is West Rural Saint Andrew. Um, the parish and area profile. The customer base that we have for KC is. 114,577 persons. For West Rural is 7,313. Metering is 87,377. West Rural is 5,813. As you can see the breakdown here, the billing, 1.02 billion. West Rural, 20.4 million. So you do matter to us at NWC. Yes, you do. <laughs> Commercial accounts, 10,802. And um, West Rural, 259. Receivables, that's what you guys give on to us, is... Um, 10.7 billion, and for West Rural, 717 million. I know you guys are going to partner with us when we are through. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I know, I understand, I understand. But we are here really to partner with you guys. So just give me an opportunity to all the questions for now. Just give me an opportunity to just go through the presentation and um, we can address any question that you guys have at the end of the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, I know we're going to have a good dialogue this evening, correct? And as part of that dialogue, we owe it to NWC just to make their presentations and then you will have ample opportunity um, to ask your questions. Are we agreed? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, um, thank you again, my fellow people. <laughs> All right, um, our current water production for just the parish of Kingston and St. Andrew is approximately 1.2 billion in terms of water. Um, the sources for, we had actually looked at just West Rural, so the sources in this particular area is approximately 15 sources, um, but for the entire KSA, which is Kingston and St. Andrew, it is 51 in total. Major sources in West Rural, though, as you guys may have known, is um, King Western, Mahoney, Bucky Plain, Isaac Hall, Second Breakfast, last but not least, for this conference is only Barnetwood, Castle James. Some of the challenges that NWC has is um, as you guys may have known, is that we have an uh, aged infrastructure, meaning that it's whole and most of it, the pipe network at most, need to be replaced. We have most in West Rural St. Andrew our seasonal source, meaning that, um, you know, when it doesn't rain, we have challenges to deliver that service that you need. When it actually rains, we have another challenge to give you that service because the water isn't as pristine as we would want it to be. So we have that as another challenge. Um, we have some service delivery in some pocket, pockets sorry, within Kingston and St. Andrew. And I guess I don't want to go too far in that, but we are persons do live in elevated area beyond our service supply, it really challenges us to get water there. You guys may not know, but it does. So just explain it to you guys. Um, we have, um, for some areas where we have the challenges are Lawrence Tavern, right in this particular area, square and surrounding, Barda, Mount Charles, and section of Brandon Hill. We also have high truck cost. The, the cost to truck water is very high. Moreover, that we are having challenges where trucking is concerned. And last but not least, which is not on the slide, is actually theft. Unauthorized persons actually entering on our network really pose a lot of problems. That in itself pose how we deliver the service the water quality as well because when somebody tap into your resources and authorize do not sterilize whatever they use the contaminant can get into that water but we will speak to that um, one of the other challenges that we have is poor farming practices and that causes soil erosion when you cut all the trees down to plant that precious coffee that we really need um that is one when we have um that will lead to sometimes chemical intrusion animal rearing meaning that we have a lot of pig farms or pens near the water area this is your source you know? this is your community so we are asking for your help to protect it as well as NWC. Poor garbage disposal is another major problem that we have, especially when it rains. What we see coming down into the catchment at most are the collection for your treated water, your drinking water. 
is the same garbage that you guys dispose at times. I'm not accusing anybody, but I'm just telling you that we just need to tighten up on those practices. This is from our last production. This is from January. Based on what I just mentioned to you about the contaminant, we have lost for King Western alone 10 days of operation due to one contaminant. Believe it or not, we have lost that. In addition to that, we have lost it due to high turbidity as well, which caused from the same soil erosion, from the same practices as all we actually do our farming. Mahoney, seven days. Bucky Plain, five days. Isocol, just a day. However, these data could have been avoided if we actually did proper garbage disposal. Improvement projects that NWC has embarked on from 2017-2018. Um, pipeline improvement, we are currently still improving the pipe network along the Cavaliers to Barnetwood. Well, the Barnetwood to Cavaliers um, source, which some of you guys may know as Tarpa Tree. Yes, that project is to improve the water delivery. The main that is there is not sufficient enough to carry the volume of water required to move it within the Golden Inn era and beyond. Um, we have done some major tank installation, which is at Downcastle, that 100,000 gallon tank. And that tank is actually being used because this area is under regulation, which is the Temple Hall, Mount Ogle, Oz Green area. It is on regulation. So when the water is diverted elsewhere, the tank comes in and supply that area with water as well. Um, pipeline replacement. We have done some leak repairs at Florence Hill. Um, we have done some at King Western Main Road. Mahoney, Mount Ogle, Unity, Pigeon Valley, but we need to do much more. We are, we are here acknowledging that we need to do much more, hence we need your partnership with us at NWC. Several, we have um, several other improvement works that are also being assessed. Is the upgrading, upgrade work at Fernhill Tank. Um, which we are planning to, to lay a um, larger diameter pipe to get water more fluent to that particular tank. Hence, the community of Fernhill. Um, Belmore, Coakley area, Grand Hill, still looking how we can improve the service delivery that we have. Um, we can hold the questions until later. We have persons at the back which are more than capable to answer any questions that you do have. Thank you very much again for having us at NWC. Walter Davis is the Network Services Director at Flow. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome him. Thank you. Elizabeth Bennett Marsh, moderator. MP, Juliet. Good evening. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, Jennifer Housen, caretaker, all other politicians, our political representatives, representatives on the head table from utilities. Good evening. I'm honored to be here to be a part of this. Now, I want to discuss what. Hello? Hey. I want to discuss what uh, Flow has to offer in, in our services and how we plan to expand our network to facilitate you as best as possible. Uh, let me first um, welcome you and introduce you to my colleagues, Celia Morgan, 
who is the Corporate Communications Manager, Nadine Henriquez, Supervisor, Customer Experience, as well as representatives from the retail, retail sales, field services, and television team. And you'll see some members of the team at the back. Now, for our mobile infrastructure, we have been transforming the network over the past three years, since 2015, 2016, into 2017, first implementing and transforming our 4G network, and also expanding that into 2017 for our LTE services. And as you may understand, LTE is the fastest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> and we are there, and our service works. Now we have, we are in the areas of Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Catherine, Ocho Rios, Montego Bay, Mandeville, and on and on. We are implementing new 4G sites and we are strategically um, moving forward in terms of increasing our coverage for our customer base. Now there are a number of things that we are doing. We have also on the fixed side, we have um, a system that is called HFC. It's basically your platform that provides to you um, television, telephone services, and internet services. And we have been uh, implementing this for many years now. And what we have seen is that where we have um, our aerial cables, cables that run on the, on the power lines, we, are, we see a, a lot of situations where we are vandalized, we um, uh, get burns, uh, where accidents happen and cause your services to be out. So what we have done is taken a strategic uh, position to start burying our services on the ground. So we have the Stony Hill area that that was, that was done in last year, Constant Spring, Montego Bay, St. Catherine, West Milan. So these are strides that we have taken thus far. Other areas and other services, we call it VDSL or ADSL, that is with your um, telephone lines and internet. But now we have expanded that to now offer a triple pay package. And these are in areas in these communities, above rocks, border, Burnside Hill. I'm not hearing anyone. <laughs> Dallas, uh, Dublin, Gordon Town, Lawrence Tavern. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mahoney, Maryland, Mount Charles, Pine Grove, Red Hill Square, Red Light, Rock Hall Square, St. Maria, St. St. Christopher, Temple Hall, Tom's River, and for 2018, March 2018, we should be finished with Cypress Hall, Dallas 2, and Mount Ogle. In 2018, we, as we expand our coverage, we are implementing uh, 125 MSANs, the same VDSL that we are talking, and allowing you to uh, be able to experience our triple play um, experience. So we are going to the Flor Florence Hall, Guava Ridge, Paradise Road. Florence Hill, sorry. Uh, Penwood. Olympic Gardens, that is in, in Kingston, Mount Matthews, Green Valley Flat, Sea View Gardens in Kingston. So we are, we, are, we are still expanding our services because of the need in the, in the, in the Kingston and St. Andrew areas for our customers. Additionally, we are implementing fiber to the home services in many areas across the island. Um, fiber to the home is basically 
changing from the copper services that we would have and the ability to provide higher bandwidth services for you because bandwidth is key and king in this environment. We have, have students going to school, we have persons wanting to, to research things on the internet. And we have, we have been doing this in different areas in, in St. Catherine, St. Anne's, Manchester, St. Thomas, basically all across the island. And uh, what we want to do today is to have your input as to how the service is for you, what your woes are, and what the good things that you have experienced from the, from the company. All right? Uh, thank you. So questions and answers can be had afterwards. Thank you. Marcel Hurt Davis is from Flo. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker to you this evening. Emmanuel De Rosa was appointed president and CEO of the Jamaica Public Service Company Limited, effective August 1 last year. Prior to that, he served as the CEO for the Northwest Territories Power Corporation, or NTPC, in Canada for six years, where he led the organization to becoming an industry leader within Canada. Mr. DeRosa has 26 years of experience in the electrical utility experience, working in the areas of distribution, transmission, and generation. He has previously held the position Vice President of Operations and Engineering, Transmission and Distribution Asset and Investment Manager, Design Supervisor, Distribution Engineer, and I could go on. His bio is very extensive, significant because he is a man with a depth of experience in the utility sector, the electric electricity sector. He was born on the island of Sao Miguel in the Azores in Portugal, but he migrated to Canada at the age of three with his family. So does that make you Portuguese or Canadian, Mr. DeRosa? Jamaican. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome President and CEO of the Jamaica Public Service Company, Mr. Emmanuel DeRosa. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. And that's, in fact, true. I used to refer to myself as a, a Canadian more and more I just say, look, I'm Jamaican. You know, my wife loves it, loves it here. You can't hear me? I'm sorry, I'll be louder then. I'm gonna say that my wife loves, loves it here and she has a new slogan. It's uh, born in Canada, but built for Jamaica. So, uh, anyways. Minister of Parliament, Juliet Cutberg Flynn. Caretaker candidate, Jennifer Housen. Councillor, Gareth Walker, <laughs> residents of Lawrence Tavern and surrounding communities, Mr. Hopeton Herod, Ontario, Ontario. what's my previous, previous life, of the Office of Utility Regulations, and all distinguished guests tonight. Hoping this is better, not quite, okay. Anyways, before I get into some more of the, the speech, I'm just going to say, I was thinking about what I would say to you, and I, and I remember my first meeting with the Prime Minister. His first question to me was, why are you here in Jamaica? And I thought, wow, okay, that's a tough question for an, for an icebreaker. And I told him, look, I've been in the utility industry for 26 years, and I've learned a lot of things, and I thought that Jamaica was the right place where I could really bring my skills to help the people of this country. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to help the people of Jamaica. Yep. His next question was, how are you going to stop electricity theft? And I thought for a second and, and then said, well, I've worked in transmission, distribution, generation, you know, in the renewables, I've worked, I started out as a design engineer, then I ended up as a CEO. So I've worked in pretty much all areas of the utility industry, but, and, I, and so I can solve problems in pretty much anywhere in a utility industry that may be thrown at me, or maybe not that exact problem, but a very similar one. 
but not quite this one. So he kind of looked at me and I said, but I'm a student of life and I'll continue to work on it until we finally solve it. Anyways, I'm very happy to participate in today's meeting and bring greetings from the entire staff at JPS and bring remarks on behalf of JPS to you. I'd like to commend the OUR on the Parish Connections Initiative, which provides an opportunity for us as a utility representatives to meet with and hear from the people that we serve. This is my very first community meeting, but certainly will not be my last. I've been in Jamaica, as you heard, since August of last year, and when I was appointed president and CPO of JPS, you know, it, it was an honor to serve the people of this country, and I look very forward, I look very much forward to serving you in the best of my capacities. I am very proud to have joined a team of hardworking, committed individuals who want to do their best for our customers and for the people of Jamaica. Traveling around the island for the past few months, I've had the opportunity to hear from employees at JPS as well as from our customers. Almost all of these conversations focused on the cost of electricity and the quality of service that we provide. Our team members at JPS are very passionate about electricity costs and service as much as you being our customers. One of our main priorities at JPS is to improve the service that we provide to the people of this country. That's why last year we invested more than $12.8 billion in projects to strengthen the grid and improve the service that you experience. Last year was a record-breaking year for capital expenditure in Jamaica's electricity sector. JPS went over and above everything that it has done before in terms of capital investment, and this was intentional. We assessed our service levels, planned for where we wanted to take this company and our country, and decided that it was necessary to make significant investments of capital to achieve these goals. We invested in projects in all areas of operations, power generation, delivery, and customer service. Our main projects for 2017 included the overhaul and maintenance of power generating plants, which will improve their reliability and efficiency. The rollout of smart meters in several communities as we continue to build out continue to build out our smart grid infrastructure, improving our efficiency as well as building upon our accuracy for our billing. Upgrading our distribution voltages to offer improved power quality to our customers and the LED street lighting project which reduces costs, improves lighting and we are continuing with this this year. Last year we touched over 50,000 streetlights. We did 18,000 repairs and we installed 36,000 LED streetlights across the country of a total inventory of about 105,000. So we effectively touched half of all the streetlights in this country last year in some form or manner. But I know there's... Thank you for that, but I know there's a lot more work to be done on streetlights, and I expect to hear a lot about them tonight. We're also invested in strengthening the power delivery grid infrastructure by changing out poles and lines to provide you with more reliable supply. We introduced more technology to help us detect and respond more quickly to power outages. In 2017, we also invested in expanding our prepaid metering service and putting in infrastructure to get service to communities that did not have safe, reliable electricity before. You may have noticed that we've been doing some work right here in your own community. Significant work has been done on the power line that supplies Lawrence Tavern and in the surrounding communities. We have invested in streetlight repairs, 
pull replacement and rehabilitation, transformer replacement, and lightning mitigation. While we're not where we want to be, we are already seeing tangible improvements. Our customers on this feeder are experiencing fewer and shorter power outages. Last year, we saw a 14% reduction in the number of power outages to our customers in these communities compared to 2016. Most significantly, there was a dramatic reduction in the duration of power outages. As a result of the new technology that allows us to respond more quickly, and in fact, we saw a 58% reduction in the duration of power outages for this area. We give you our commitment that we will continue to improve the service to you in this year. In fact, JPS will be investing even more this year than we did last year. We are projecting an investment of $15 billion in capital projects in 2018 to provide our customers with even better service over the coming months. Another top area of concern among us for our customers is the cost of electricity. Even as we continue to increase our investment in providing you with better service, one of my objectives is to explore every option possible to keep the price of electricity affordable for the people of Jamaica. And we are starting right inside our own company. In the last few months, we've done a thorough assessment of our operations and have started to take steps to ensure that we operate as efficiently as possible. This includes staff rationalization in some areas, but I commit that we will not compromise our service to you. One of the things that keeps electricity prices high is the cost of oil that Jamaica has to import to generate power. That's why we're looking at different fuel sources. We will be placing even more emphasis on renewables in support of the national strategy to achieve fuel diversity in the energy sector. JPS has already made significant strides in helping to diversify Jamaica's energy sector by facil facilitating the introduction of LNG or liquid natural gas. We plan, we plan to take fuel diversity even farther by becoming more involved in renewable energy. As a tropical island, we have the abundant resources of the sun, water, and wind which we must explore in a much deeper way going forward. Electricity theft is another area on which we're focusing as we seek to improve the service to paying customers and keep electricity costs down. When people steal electricity, they are not stealing from just a JPS, but also from you. This places greater pressure on our infrastructure and compromises the quality of service that we can provide you while sending up the cost of electricity that we have to sell you. Most of you would be aware that for years, JPS has been grappling with the problem of electricity theft. In many cases, as soon as we remove the illegal connections, people put them right back up. Persons have gotten so creative in finding ways to illegally extract electricity that identifying electricity theft is sometimes like looking for a needle in a haystack. We will be, therefore be increasing our use of technology in 2018 as part of our strategy to tame this monster and ultimately bring down the electricity rates for our customers. This includes a $3 billion investment in smart metering technology alone. But we need your help in this area. As honest, hardworking people, you should not allow persons to steal from you and send up your bills. Don't tolerate it in your community. Report electricity theft to us at JPS and to the police. Electricity theft is a crime and we all have to work together in order to solve it. At JPS, one of my key priorities is safety, and this is safety for all around. Safety for the JPS employees and safety for you, my customers, and the general public. 
While electricity brings convenience and makes our lives more comfortable, the generation, transmission, and distribution of this commodity comes with real hazards. And we all need to be conscious at all times. I would love for all of my employees and my customers to go home to their families intact at the end of each and every day. I therefore encourage you to use electricity safely and encourage your children to have respect for electricity. Teach them to stay away from trees that have power lines running near them. No matter how attractive the fruits on the tree might be, do not pick them if they're close to a power line. The kite flying season is almost, is almost here. Do not allow children to fly kites near power lines and do not retrieve kites that get caught in power lines. It could be a matter of life and death. And finally, customer service improvements remain a top priority for us at JPS. Our focus is on providing greater convenience and more options for our customers. Today I have with me Senior Vice President Blaine Jarrett. I was going to ask you to stand, Blaine, right over here. Also scheduled to be here is Senior Vice President of Customer Service Ramsey McDonald. I'm not sure if he arrived. I was looking for him, but he's there? Okay, all right. Hello, Ramsey. Microphone. We also have Parish Manager Omar Brown. If I could get you to stand, Omar. He's around here somewhere. There he is. There he is. Okay. He must have been on his phone working, just like good JPS employee. We also have Regional Director Marvin Campbell. Marvin, can I get you to stand? And he's at the back. Okay. He's behind the, he's behind the bright light. And we have Director of Corporate Communications, Winsome Callum, who many of you I'm sure have seen in the media. And if I can get Winsome to say hello. These are the people on whom I depend to ensure that JPS can keep our commitments to you. Together we will be working to improve the service and we'll make ourselves available to answer your questions and follow up on your concerns even after we leave here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and I look forward to the dialogue. I got a new phone. Thank you very much, Mr. DeRosa. So, ladies and gentlemen, one of the common themes that you hear um, um, in several of the presentations this evening is theft. Yes? So, theft, theft continues to be a serious issue um, among the utility companies. It's a very serious issue that has long-term implications for us, the customers. So we need you to be vigilant. Look out for persons, because we're assuming that there's nobody in this room who is stealing water, light, or... Why you put up your hand? No, I cannot. No, I, I did not hear that. I did not hear that. That's not supposed to happen. Huh? All right, the man put up his hand and said, yeah, me a teeth it, me a teeth it. I don't, no, no, not supposed, because it has implications, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure that our, we could see a, a positive impact on our bills if it is that we manage to cauterize this problem, especially electricity bill. Yeah, it is, it is not good for the remainder of us well-thinking and bill-paying customers. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Right. All right, so it's now time for, if I could just get Gordon or Sherton to come with the mics. We're going to ask you, um, how do we do the, it's now time for your questions. Mr. DeRosa may not be able to stay with us for a long time, so if you have any questions for JPS, um, although his senior team members are here. So we're going to go with the mic. We're going to be floating the mic. Uh, Gordon, how do you want the residents to come in the middle, in the aisle, Gordon? Come in the aisle, of course the camera is there, Gordon, so how are we going to do that? Gordon, Gordon, the camera in the aisle, you know how are you going to do that? Kirk, well, okay, so we invite you to come up and form a line, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to just direct you in this... Perhaps this latter aisle, Gordon, 
Can we use that latter L, please? Can we use that L? So if you have questions, please come and us form a line in that L. Recognize the community. Mount James. Yes, miss. All protocol observe. <laughs> I am Justice of the Peace, Pansy Nelson from Mount James. I sat and I listened to all the presenters. And for me personally, when you have a problem with JPS and you call and they promise you that they will come to assist you up in Mount James, nothing has been done. I personally can congratulate the service in Mount James that we are getting from JPS. In times gone by, as we have a little rain and a little breeze, light gone. But right now, the service there in Mount James is very good. And I commend you. The theft, how is it that we are going to deal with those persons that does not decide to pay light bills. I am a white-haired woman. I am, very, I am very young, I'm just 16 years old. And trust me, when I get my light bill, Lord help me when I go down to JPS. I have to make arrangement with JPS to pay my bills when I get disconnections because the bills, they are so high. And there are persons in the community need to be on the system, on a paying system. I am very happy to be here this evening and I would like to ask of Digicel, if you are over on a flow system and you want to come to Digicel, what must we do? All right, so is, that's one question. I'm, I'm trying to cap it because we have a long line. Yes. And I gave you a nice opening statement. Yes. So one Thank more. Thank you, ma'am. I assume you finish. One more question. One more question. Yes. I am very sorry to know that there is nobody from the works agency here, nor from agriculture, because for me personally, I'm coming down. The other day, I went to my doctor. And he told me that I was pregnant and I was carrying a triplet. And while the taxi man was taking me from Mount James to the university hospital, all three babies gone. All right. Madam, member of parliament, we are calling upon you through this me. Oh, no, no, touch me. I am calling upon you through this media. To see what can be done for us over in Mount James, Mount Pleasant, Mount Prospect, Mount Thierry towards the road. Thank you. God bless thank, you. Thank you. So, the, the one question, so ladies and gentlemen, so the one question I got was, you ask a question of Digicel, if it is that you need to change from flow, maybe Digicel, Elon? Sure, thank you very much. We're always happy and willing and well to welcome another customer to our network. Um, the number portability um, arrangements are in place. All right, I'll stand. Question about switching from one network provider to the next. There's a number portability um, protocol in place, and all you have to do is to visit the nearest Digicel store. Since, of course, our executives are here, you could just have a chat with them at the back and we'll arrange it for you. All right? We'll be happy to welcome you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you just to get directly to your questions. And if it is that you have a very personal problem that's unique to you that they can't address up here, there are help desks at the back. Okay, so please utilize the help desk. We just ask you to keep the dialogue low so we don't disturb this. Yes, ma'am, your time. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All protocols observed. I would like to ask... Which community? My name is Mrs. Lewis Maxine. I'm from Montauga Line, Severn. Yes. Acting principal of Essex Hall Primary. Yes, ma'am. My problem is I live... Montauga, but it's like in Lawrence Severn where we have lights coming from the clinic road. Most of the time that lights, the lights go out, burn up the things in the houses. 
We ask, I have asked them for a coated wire, you know, because it goes through the bamboo. Nobody have answered us. So most of the time our lights are out for days, three days, four days, when it burns, the wire burns. So I'm asking, what can you do for us in that area? The clinic road going down to Rosal. What can you do for us? For flow now, I also have problems with flow. Sometimes my internet is out for weeks. A month. I speak to them. They say they would reimburse me, but I don't get any reimbursement. I am asking, you also have a package going. I was asking, if I get your package deal where you give me internet, cable, and everything, would it go like that? Would I be out with of, of cable, internet, and everything for a week? Because I have a straight line from from flow. I'm probably the only person in the area, a few of us. I still have that line. And can you do anything for us about charging us that line fee? Please, and thank you. Sure, so there was one question in there was that the lights were out for three or four days in your home due to a power outage? Yes. Okay, and... Well, there was there burnt yeah. fire on the lines and we reported it. But nobody answered. We talked okay. to those on the telephone, you know, they said they would send a truck, but for days. Yeah. No, I, I do agree. I agree with you that having your power out for three or four days and things going on without response from our crews is unacceptable. When you look at the average outage rate for Jamaica, the average customer in Jamaica is without power for about 26 hours per year. And while that's a, a vast improvement from where we were at, there's still a long way to go. You know, we're, we're not going to reach the standards of, say, the U.S. or Canada, which in the main grid, they'll see a power outages per year of two to four hours. But in my opinion, as a country, for us, a reasonable target would be something around 10 hours, which means we need to cut more than cut the power outage rate still in half. So we'll be working on this. You know, we've made some improvements. We're going to continue to improve. I do ask that you, you speak to some of our representatives and say, look, this is my specific situation. Three or four days, in my opinion, is unacceptable to be reaching out to the electricity company, to JPS, and not getting a response. Okay. We know that there are some areas where we have challenges in terms of service and restoration of services. Um, as indicated, we, were, we saw situations where we were impacted by um, vandalism, uh, lines being cut or accidents, and these things usually take time. Sometimes we have to wait on other utilities to put poles back in place before we can run our lines. But for your specific situation though, we'd want to get that information from you so that we can help you. And for my young friend who wants to switch, I, we don't want you to switch and want to switch back. So if we can have the discussions with you also. Okay, good evening everyone. Good evening. My name is Tanisha Garden Allen. I am from Brandon Hill Community. Well, I have a problem with the lights because where I am living, we have a church up the hill. And we're not getting any light from the 220. And we come down by JPS two times, and they said they will send their team. When they send the team, we pay for the the um the connection, connection and yes. everything. And when they come to put in the meter, there is no light. And it is a church, and you know that church can a thief light. So we want to know what JPS will do for the church. Because I'm telling you the truth, we cannot do without the light. And it's two times we come down there and two times we pay for it. Yes. So we need the light. So if we now get the light, we have to go take liquor. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm here telling you the truth. <laughs>
Okay, okay, Tanisha, I don't, I don't want you to thief the light. I want you to pray at church, okay? But I'm going to ask, <laughs> but I'm going to ask that Tanisha, my good, my good friend here from JPS, Tanisha is going to speak to you specifically about your issue and, and get more details from you, okay? I don't know that you want to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, just, yeah. So she's going to come and talk with you one on one, all right? Next. Yes, sir. Nights, one and all. Uh, yeah. My concern is towards Water Commission. Water Commission. And JPS. All right. What's your oh, name, sir? I'm Clement. Clement. I'm from Lawrence Tavern. My concern is that we have this $250 late service charge right right the 250 late fee payment yeah. fee yes what i'm thinking about here the level of theft in the services that 250 dollars to me compensate for the theft i am saying as a pain consumer of both services if you people come to me and say who are who Thief in light in your community. I can give you the information. Don't take the two hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> Is that clear? No. I am being fear. Yes. I pay for the services and they steal it from me. I complain to the company. Yes. And what they're saying to me is bull. You understand what a commission say? Once they take it after it pass through the meter, it's not their concern. Right? Yeah. JPS, they give you a certain amount of line to the meter. Once it's been taken from behind the meter, it's none of their business. You talk to the police, they have nothing to say. So I am saying this is all dishonesty. And if we need to identify the dishonest cons Consumers of a service, we need the customer, the paying customer, to identify them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, each and everyone, distinguished guests Good and evening. fellow citizens. I'm well, not hearing you, ma'am. You're going to have to talk a little. Just talk louder. Okay. I'm Dahlia Bolton from Temple Hall. Cuba Ridge to be exact, and I have three issues and a major concern. First one I would like to put to JPS, because in that area we have about up to 100 or over 100 residents, and just a few private citizens have electricity. The rest of us, you know what it is. All right, I know and what you know what it is. Very, right? very much would <laughs> like to be regulated so we can get to be pay our bills. You want to be regularized. Right. This is where in Temple Hall? Cuba Ridge, just Cuba above Ridge. Golden Spring Primary School. Okay. And for NWC, we also don't have no water commission. Um, NWC pipeline, just a two private persons and the rest of us have to go by the river and it's not healthy. Okay. Because I myself, if I don't really buy a bottle of water or maybe go in Kingston, I don't really get any chlorine water. I have to live by the river water or yes. the rain water. Yes. And sometimes the mosquito, and then now when the dry season comes, the river gets a little low, so you know that the water can be infested or contaminated. Yes. All right, the next thing is, we get to, um, this one is for the MP. We get to understand that we are not registered, so therefore none of the utility companies do not recognize us. Miss Cotburn, I would like to know how can we go about getting Cuba Ridge rest registered? Registered as a community? As a community. Minister, Please, ma Member of Parliament, you. I don't. She says it's not registered as a community. She's not recognized as a community. It's not, they say it's private. It's a private. So infrastructure. Place. So what I what I seem to be getting from you is that because it's not a recognized community, infrastructure is not run in the community. Right. So they don't have light wires and they don't no, have water pipes. No, the only pipes. service we have is flow and digital. That's the only service we have and getting right now. 
No JPS, is no it water. That, is it that parish council did not, whoever the developer, did not turn the, the property or the community over? Is right. that it? Something, that's what okay. I'm getting to understand. So the NAJ... The, but I can give that, you some information in regard to such. You will have to speak to me more on that because okay. then that's a parochial, that's a parish council situation that okay, we're going to have to talk about. Thank you very much. Will do, ma'am. Thanks. All right. So um, I'm going to ask um, NWC, do you know of Cuba Ridge Community? In Temple Hall, yeah. Um, good evening again. The NWC, in terms of connection, is really to the property and not to an individual person. So that situation more likely would have to be sorted out with the other entity. Then you can approach NWC and we will reconnect. Cannot do it without the proper paperwork. And JPS? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So that community for us, I uh, think last year we did a um, visit to that community. I'm looking at, yeah, we had gone and done a walkthrough with the councillor to look at how the infrastructure could be put in. It's a very large project. As a matter of fact, I recall on the spot when we looked at it, if we were to try to approach it, we are thinking somewhere in the region of over $10 million it would take to um, bring service there. So we are still in dialogue with the councillor to see what can be done, but it is something that we are aware of, and so we're working it out with her. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm asked to introduce myself. I'm Ditomi Sargent, parish manager for Kingston and St. Andrew North. Thank you, Datomi. Yes, sir. Good evening. Will Fraser. Will Fraser. Correct. Brandon Hill Division. Now, NWC, you first. You need to concentrate on fixing your leaking pipes in the community and taking out those old pipes that are there. That is leaking off probably 50% of the water from time to time. So you need to get that, to get those started out. Flo, a question here. Why is it that your service is fluctuated so often in the community? From time, from time to time, you have practically no service or low coverage sometimes you're up to maximum. So see if you can get that sort out for me, please. Uh, Digicel, your, um, your customer service is poor, very poor. When you call, when you call the service, you get shifted from one. In fact, I can remember losing my credit about three times. I called the customer service. I was given the run around. Then the last time I was told, uh, a, a um, supervisor will get in touch with me. On to date, no supervisor has gotten in touch with me. I've lost all of that credit. Right off. Now you need to try and get, get your hack, to, hack together. All right, sir. So uh, you, you had three up, three utilities. You're hitting all of them? Yes, ma'am. One more, because you see the line behind you? All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll speak with, I'll speak with um, the lady there. JPS, one JPS. and one. Right. All right. So basically, right. NWC, you're making the observation that NWC, they need to fix leakage. Right? Yes. Um, Flo, you said the service is very poor in Brandon Hill. Yes, it flocked to you. The phone service? Yes. The, flow, the phone. Phone and um, data service because. Data, yes, yes. Once you have low coverage on your arm, your, 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 your phone. Yes. No, they have, they have a pole in the area. All right, man, come and time. address this quickly for me. All right, and then I'll have Digicel address the customer service issue that you're having. Mans? Yes. 
Okay, we'll, we'll take a look on Brandon Hill, do some investigations for you. Thanks to my friend from Brandon Hill. Look, like I said earlier, losing your credit in that way is a thing of the past. But it doesn't mean we can't look back and sort out the issue. So I'm going to ask you to just check in with um, one of our execs at the back and we'll be more than happy to assist you. All right? Thanks. Morris Williams from Mount Airy. From where, sir? Mount Airy. Main, Mount Airy, yes. Okay, for Digicel, there is a tower in Mount Airy, but there should be a red light on the top, and for years that light has been blown. We make several reports, but nothing has been done until now. Okay, from JPS, I'm, I attended a meeting in Golden Spring a couple of, about two years ago, and put into the street lights. They asked us for some information to tell them the lights, which isn't working. We send that information. They came and they fixed some in the area, but they didn't enter the pond side road. Um, in December of this year, they came back. Well, some people go around and they took the information. The workmen came back to the area, but they still didn't enter the pond side road. Thank you. Pond yeah. side? Yeah, sorry, just another one. Um, there's an area in Mount Prospect, uh, Mr. Walker, aware of it. <coughs> there is no electric, proper electric light there, and those people really have a challenge in that area. Thank you. It's an area they call Maglashin. Thank you. Maglashin. It's not a district, but that's the name. Maglashi? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. JPS has taken note of the concerns. Yes, sir. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, Mr. Barr from the Temple Hall District. Um, Mr. Wall, sorry? Barr. B-A-R-R. -R. Uh -huh. From which district, Mr. Barr? Temple Hall District. Temple Hall, yes. The same um, era... With the Cuba Ridge era, I, I would like to know if you have a time schedule in which we don't want to just hear that um, looking into the matter. We want to know to the deal with the matter, especially JPS and um, the water. It's a very needed thing to be there right now at the moment. Reason being, we want everybody to be regularized here. You want to be uh, regularized? Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Um, they told me, can you prevent the timeline? Um, okay, so no, we don't have a timeline. Reason being, as I explained, so typical in a situation like this, um, with a development, the developer would have put in the infrastructure at their cost. So in this case, what we're really trying to do, reaching out with um, the council, is trying to help her to identify how it can be funded. So until we identify the funding, I can't tell you a timeline. Once that is identified, because as I said, really, it should have been done by the developer before the, the land was distributed. It's really the developer's responsibility to put in that infrastructure at his cost or her cost. Oh. Marvin, is that the same for you as well? So I get the feeling, uh, Mr. Barr, that the community was developed without plans for infrastructure. So that is the difficulty that you have. Yes. Oh, dear. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am Drisdale from XSL. Drisdale from XSL. I have a question for JPS. I have been in several meetings and uh, we make representation about our street light and uh, we walk the community and we took the number of every post that the light is not working. They asked us to bring a letter to Roof and we did it. We bring a letter to KSAC and up till now nobody come and check with us with our street light. There's a, there are light posts there? The light is not working. The, the light post is there, but the light is yes, not working. And how there. long has it been out? Over here, because we have a copy here. Over here? Yeah. From the which, which, area, which area in the community, specifically? It's not one point. Right it, through the community. Right, right throughout through the, the community, community, in Essex yes. Hall. Yeah. Essex. Yes. And what is happening now, because... From Banshaw, right? The road is so dark. 
people going to church at night, especially ladies. It so what, what were you told when you, because if you made the effort as a community to go to JPS about these street lights, because it's more than one, right? Yeah. And you have made the effort to go as a community. What have you been told by the JPS? They will come and check it. And up till today. For over a year? Right in this auditorium, we did it already. They told me, please, please address this. And uh, what a commission. Okay, so just to respond to, to the matter of the streetlights. So we do get those, and I, I think I recall specifically that one. But what we have been doing, we have done works in the various areas, but what we have done since is to change our strategy. So even um, up to recently, what we're doing is when we're coming, we speak to the police or the council and ask them to assign somebody to go with the team to show them where the lights are to be fixed. So that's the approach we're now using because when we go by the one-off reports that we get, it, gets, uh, it takes, basically we waste more time. So what we're now doing is working with the councillors and the police. So when we come to the community, they assign someone to take the crew around to where the lights are that need to be fixed. So we, I will note Essex to see who was assigned to go with us, but that is the approach we are now taking to get to get to all the lights as best we, as we can okay water commission before you go to water commission um i'm really gonna ask you sir to be in touch with us at the OUR about this because um we know street lights have been out and so on but it seems to me that if it is that the residents on a whole make an effort to go and make a formal complaint over here mr de rosa seems a bit odd so we're hoping that they told me some action will be put to this. I've been to OUR already, and it was pertaining to the church light because they were overbilling us, right? And so then we burn it, so we have to pay it. And I've been to OUR. Well, that issue can be taken one or one. But is, the street lights is, is real because that's a community now that's plunged into darkness and that also poses a security um, okay. issue okay. nwc yes sir. nwc they say water is life so we on that side have no life as pure dead people because nwc left us on our own several meetings we go to marasca road having meeting dialogue with them the citizen association and up till today NWC left us on our own. We now, as a community, are fighting to have our own water project along with our member of parliament. It is a shame on NWC. Marvin, can you take that? 30 years, no running water. We have to buy water. May have to be in a bad pan like clothes. Yes, with that particular case, we have been meeting with the community and we are currently in the position that we are 95% in terms of completion to improve water delivery in that particular area. Not just SSL, but for content, Belvedere, Golden Hill that entire stretch should have better or improved services as we go along. So we are looking at it. We will discuss the timeline outside of this forum, but we will have it done. But you say you're 95% complete, Marvin. That seems like it's a this year thing. Yes, MP. Let me just also add um, and commend the community of Essex Hall because they were able to raise funds, $15 million, to get water in their community. So I now want a commitment from NWC because I've been trying to champion this cause with the people of Essex Hall to make sure that they do get water. And it's quite frustrating. And for them to have gone out to get these, this funding, I think we need a better timeline. I know, as you said, 95%. But I think we, I want more of an answer as to when, because they're going to be starting the project um, in March sometime. We're having a meeting with the community. So I would want to have dialogue with NWC on that. Thank you, MP Cuthbert Flynn. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. 
Good evening. I am Diane Ellis from the community of Florence Hill. Uh, my problem is there is a aki tree at my house that is a threat both to myself and my neighbor. I have called in oh, four years ago and I was told that a team was coming to take care of the matter. They the aki tree? At, yes, the aki tree. Yes. They reached to Red Gallery. That's where I got the last call. And they are still at Red Gallery until now. Oh, Lord. Four years later. And um, th there was a cutting, a three, tree cutting, sometime last year. And I spoke with the supervisor and asked him if he could cut it. What they do is limit. But the roots are, being show are showing. And he said at that time when I approached him, they were going home, but they would be coming back the day after. However, the day after does not arrive. If I could get someone to cut the tree, it would have been done by this. But no one wants to approach it because it is very dangerous. Are, are the limbs still on the line? Pardon? The limbs are hanging over on the JPS line? No, no, it, not That really. has been cut down now. They're just branches. The, okay. The, the branches. Yes. And so I am not comfortable because it is posing a threat both to my house and the neighbor's house. So one last thing quickly, please. This is a list. All right, so I'm going to ask you just to go to the JPS um, table at the back for me, please, and just give them the details of what okay. you're telling us about, so they will try and sort it out for you. So maybe I should take this paper there yes, as well? Yes, ma'am. Oh, it's in terms of the lighting and whatever yes. needs to be done. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Miss Florence Hill. <laughs> yes, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. I, I am Anthony Edwards. I'm from the community of Goldburn. Um, it's good to have you people here this evening to address us. Thank you. My major concern is with the National Water Commission. One second, I'm getting a lot of buzz, so it's a bit distracting. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you just to keep down the noise level? Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. My major concern is with the National Water Commission. I noticed in recent times, the National Water Commission has been advertising in the print media, TV land, threatening customers that they're going to take them to court for not paying their bills and all of that. But I want to ask the National Water Commission a question. If you live in a community and you get water three to four times for the whole year, okay. And you sending us a bill every month, it won't work. We know that we have unscrupulous customers who don't want to pay their bills, who steal water. But I also think that the National Water Commission is very unscrupulous to be sending us bills every month for water that we are not getting. And we... And I want to say to the National Water Commission, you are threatening us. We are threatening you too, because we, the citizens, we are going to pool our resources together and we are going to take you to court for not giving out the service that you set out to do, sir. Thank you very much. All right, sir. I don't know if you can address Marvin, the water problem that seems to be aggravating his community. Okay, they say they have noted. Are you aware of it? It just come to light. Okay, so Marvin said he was not aware of it, but he's taken note of it, uh, Mr. Edwards. Yes, sir. All right. Um, good evening, Ladies and everybody. gentlemen, I continue to ask for your support in terms of keeping the noise level down. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, good evening. Um, my name is Andre Clayton. I am from the Temple Hall Zion Hill um, community. No, <clears throat> I have been living in Zion Hill um, since 1998. 
and in that year was probably the last time I have ever seen water entered the pipe in the community. There used to be a standpipe halfway on the hill, but what had happened is that water used to come there like on Sundays and maybe like on a Friday night and so forth. And then now we used to get water in our pipes as well at home so we could fill up our drums and so forth for the week. However, from 1998, today is 2018, this is 20 years later, we have not seen not even a drop of water come back into that pipe from then, right? This is a community that is bordered by two rivers. You have the Wagwater River that runs on Temple Hall Main Road, and there's a river up in the hill as well to the back. Now, I understand that Water Commission has a, some treatment plant somewhere near there in Temple Hall that takes the water from that river, send it all the way back to Stony Hill, treat it and send it to other communities. Why can't we get some of that same water that borders our community? We don't have $15 million like Essex, but we have water. All we need is infrastructure to put water in our pipes. The community has been suffering very, very terribly when it comes to water because the people have to be getting waters out of spring holes, right? Mm. And if it's not for the mercy of God and the shower of rain, we will have no water whatsoever. And so therefore, I am appealing to Water Commission this evening that you said that water is life. You need to give us water so that we can carry on with our lives. It is not an easy thing for, for be a big man and stand up with a rug a beard in a bad pan it not look good it doesn't look good we need water because we are willing to pay for the water all the people that you see here this evening complaining about water and light everybody here is willing to pay for the service all you need to do is provide us with the service i have one more thing one more issue i have and it is with flow no, I have an internet service at my home, right? And in September, I lost that connection. When I called Flo and spoke to them about it, they said that they had some server or something that was out in the area, so I could not get any internet. No, it took three months before, after I made two reports, it took three months before somebody contacted me as it regards to getting back my service up and running. And when they had contacted me, when I lost the service in September, I had a balance on the bill of about $7,500. And I had to pay it before I could even get any information, right, as to what it would take to get my service restored. When I paid that money, somebody called me sometime in December again about my service after they had given me a ticket number. When they called me, I... Before I called them, what I did, I called Lime and listened to the, bill, um, the billing information on the line. And my bill was for $8,500 and I had no internet for three months. When I called and spoke to a customer service rep, they tell me that I have to pay the bill before I can get somebody to come and resolve that. That is not customer service. That is poor. My wife looked at me and asked me if I had paid the bill, why the internet is out so long. So we need to have better service from these utility companies, my dear, because the people are willing to pay. Just provide us with the service. Thank you. Working with that community. And um, however, the problem that exists is that that community is above the hydraulic grade line. Let me break that down for you. It is above our service delivery. That's why the water goes exactly to the standpipe and no more. So the developer that actually grant permission to actually build those houses beyond NWC coverage is at fault. However, we are looking at it. We have noted the problem and we are currently having a we have started doing some investigation in terms of we have dug, dug some wells and tried to look at the quality of the water. Let me speak to the quality of the water as well. The water that surrounds Zainil cannot be used because of 
the same poor farming practices cannot be used. That is one of the only water you can throw in a desert and something grow. I can tell you that much. That's how bad that water is. We have tested it. It cannot be used. Hence the reason why we are doing further investigation to see how best we can give you better service delivery from alternative source. Thank you. Sir. Before mass comes, I just continue to ask for your patience. We'll soon release you. We'll soon let you go home. Don't worry. We just have about six more persons in the line, and I know they'll be very quick. So I continue to ask for your patience. All right? Just um, take the noise level down a bit for me, please. Thank you. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to just go over to the, to the customer service section and report the issue. Uh, there is somebody that will... That will Listen to your concern and try to help you out with that with that bill. Yes, yes, ma'am. I am Ventress Morgan. Ventress Morgan. Morgan. And I hear you the mic. Ventress Richards Morgan. Thank you, Miss Richards Morgan. Yes, ma'am. I am from Clarks Hill. And I am challenging the water commission. NWC. Yes. Which community? Clarks Hill. Clarks Hill. Yes. Yes. Um, over 30 years now, I've been getting any water. You haven't gotten any water for over no 30 water years? No water in my pipe. No water in your pipe? No water. And your, your pipe is connected I to the NWC? To, I have to be buying water. Right? The top or bottom of Clarks Hill? The water is coming up. Where do you live, top or bottom? In the middle. In the middle? Yes. Water come from the bottom, water up the top, and we in the middle not getting any water. Okay. Over years now. All right, let's see if we can have Marvin address that. Right? I have to be buying water. Okay. And I buy water coming from the river, which I can't drink. Okay. So I buy that water and I still have to buy water to drink again. All right, let's see if NWC can address that. So I want them to come and check out that, that problem. Thanks, Miss Richards Morgan. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, for Top Clark Hill. Apparently, Clark Hill has been served from two separate sources, right? The bottom section goes to the middle, is served from Seaview Treatment Plant. The top section is actually served from same Cavaliers. So the issue, the issue that is that once we solve the Cavalier situation, as I had mentioned again, that we are 95%, in terms of completion, that will solve that issue. Separate and apart from there are some social problems that are there that we have encountered with. But you can speak to our representative at the back. Before I go to the next um, resident, I'm going to ask the customer service reps from the utility companies, can you just walk through the line that we have here with persons waiting to have their issues addressed to just see if there's anybody that has personal issues that can be taken offline? The customer service reps from JPS, NWC, Flow, and Digicel. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good night, everybody. Good evening. I am Samara Reynolds. I'm from the Mount Ogre community. I have an issue. That Which I, community, I'm sorry? Mount Ogre. Mount Ogre, yes. Yes. Um, to the Honorable Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, and knowing that it has come to my attention that Digicel has some experience with working with the community also, I am here on behalf of the little people of Mount Ogle Infant School, which the road leading to the school is in dire, desperate, terrible condition for these little babies to be walking and to go to the school. They are literally walking in mud whenever rain falls. Something needs to be done to that road. All right. Um, also, to JPS, I traverse which road specifically leading into the Mount Ogre Infant, Infant School. School. Okay. Yeah, that turn off going into the school. It is in terrible condition. 
Early childhood. All right. Um, also, um, to JPS, um, I have to traverse like everybody else the road to come all the way up from Manor Park. Um, I have a concern with the Templar stretch from where you have clubhouse. Can there be some lighting out there? A lot of times I almost buck up in cows driving coming up here. Or I can't see any at all. Yeah. Is it that their lights, they're not working or there's no light I am at all? On, I, I'm not sure because I don't see any, I don't identify any poles. There's no light. No light at all. Okay, so in, in the cases, I'm getting a little feedback. All right, in the cases where there's no light at all there, that is a request that has to come to us through the parish council. So you can make representation to your council or your MP and they will in turn make the application to the parish council and they will instruct us where to put the lights. The lights go on the parish council's bills. I'm sorry. So they have to give us permission to put the light, instructions to put the lights up. Okay. Um, also for from Tavern Primary going up. Um, up that stretch, there's no light on that road. Okay. So, so persons actually have a fear of walking that stretch at certain time. And there are poles there. So we'd like some assistance with light there. Okay. So it would be a similar procedure. From the Lawrence Tavern Primary School going back like you're going to, they call it track lane, um, the, the top of track lane, right on that stretch, top road, there's no lighting on that stretch. Okay. Well, as I said, it's a similar procedure that you, you made a representation to your councillor or your MP. And then the parish council instructs us to put them up. MP Cosbert Flynn, she wants to know about the road that leads to the Mount Ogle Infant School. Parish council. Is the parish council? Is the main road? It's a main road, miss? It's not a main road. We'll talk to her afterwards about it. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Sylvia Grant. Well, I'm from Belmont District. I won't even touch Water Commission tonight because everybody is dealing with that one. But I want to tonight, um, some time ago, JPS was here and we, I spoke about the street lights in that vicinity of from the Baptist Church back to Belmont. And I was told that they would have looked at it to date, they are still not repaired. And during the summer, we observed some young people going around checking on the street lights that were out. To date, they are still out. And there is no street light on that road. And it's very dark, especially for those of us who come from church in the nights. The bushing, because the place is so bushy and no light, you have to be ensure that you have lights there. So we want you to look at that. On the matter of, we call it teething lights. I spoke to a JPS meter reader once. And he told me that I must call the police when I see it. I said, okay, I will not be calling the police. Because if you work with JPS, you read the meter. You see the teething light right beside the meter. And you ignore it and telling me... A, a citizen to call the police in this time, I am not going to report it. So I need for you to educate your meter readers that when they go out and see these things, they must bring back the report to you, not us yes. civilians doing it. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I'll have Deirdre me address the street light issue. Okay, so Liz, I actually... Um, Mr. Williams is, is, is coming up. He's actually the person who coordinates our street light repairs. So he's going to speak to you about your areas and, and have them dealt with. So um, additionally, just for the general audience. Um, Liz, can you, I mean, the, the, the noise. The noise. The noise. Ladies and gentlemen, the noise is getting a little bit overbearing again. We can't hear each other. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And I continue to ask the customer service reps because we, the, the line is getting longer. We can't stay here all night. We have to leave Miss Spence's school. Right, Principal? We can't stay here all night. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if it is that the issue can be addressed at the help desk, help desk please go there. 
Okay, so I was saying regarding the street light repairs. Everybody hearing me? Regarding the street light repairs, if it is that you have reports of street lights that needs to be fixed, that gentleman in the red who's Vaden, that just stood up, he's our street light repairs coordinator. So you can just please give him the information so that he can, he can include it in his work plan. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good, Good evening, evening Ryder. Um, um, my name is David Smigel. I'm from the Moninzil Division. You're from where, sir? Moninzil Division. Yes. Um, I have just one. All right, first, I'm going to give the good news. I'm like, Moninzil Division is one of the few communities can say we have good water supply. See? So, Water Commission thanks to that. But my problem is, one well, hour is I dig up the road and now fix it back. That is my question. The road issue? Yes, man. Because Water Commission dig up the road to lay pipes and don't fix back the road. So now we have an issue. That's my issue with Water Commission. But get the water, yes. Right? But as the road fix, then come and dig out a big part. Yes. Yeah? yeah. And a big part of the undermine everything. I know me I walk on track. Water Commission, address that one. Is it that you and no other agency work together? That you know that listen you know, we have a patching program or something so when you take out the when it when they dig up a hole is do you have a timeline to fix it back because all right let's have them address it thank you sir and before he addresses it um mp cosbert flynn wanted is she here or she went to speak with the lady directly okay nwc They want to know if you and the, the, the NWA, for example, are not, for example, are not having dialogue. Huh? They have that contractual arrangement. All right, next, next, next person. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of here in 10 minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Oris Edwards from the Belmore Road community. Bell Road? Belmore. Belmore. Road community. Yes. We are trying to get electricity in the community for over 15 years now. When we went to JPS, they said it's a rural electrification. When we went to rural electrification, they sent us back to the MP. Now, the last time we spoke to them about a year ago, they said there is not enough people living in the community. And the community have about 250 persons living there. It has 250 persons living there. No. And you said that the last day I went to JPS, they told you that there were not enough persons living in the community. Yeah, rural electrification. The, oh, REP at the time. I think they've changed name now. Okay. So you want to know how you can get regularized? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you to give, come and give me your information. Because that's something we're going to have to come and look at and see if there's anything that can be done from our end. Pardon me? All right, ladies and gentlemen, they are having a difficulty Hi, hearing the answers. I like, um, the last light post is at my gate with a lot of wire and the attention burned down, burned up my fridge, my TV and my radio. I called in and reported it. No one came. I went to Rufren Road and reported it, and they said, someone is in Mavis Bank area. The next hour, they will come to me. This February now is one year, and they text me to let me know that I am on the cutoff list. So they embarrassed me. All right, don't leave, Miss. The JPS gentleman will talk with you directly about that problem. Yes, sir. Um, Councillor Myers, Lawrence Stavin. Yes, Councillor John Myers. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Well, I just want to do a little two minutes over overview. Um, the water for the Lawrence Stavin um, division. I went with about four people from district to the National Water Commission, and I was promised that things will be better in a short while, especially Goburn, Rosal, Petil, no. Fernil, and, and, and other districts. So I'm waiting on them, 
And what I want the district to do is to get together and speak as one voice. Yes, there's strength in numbers. Get together and speak as one voice and you will get things done. The electricity, the street light. Officer from your office come to KCC for meetings. And we make all the appeal. My division have over 300 street lights. And when I go around, it's not so pretty to see them not working. But the new lights have come, and none have come to Lions Tavern. If it, none of the new lights have come to Lions Tavern, and none of the old lights have been fixed, I want to know if my division owe JPS any money for the street light. And that is why my division is not getting any of the new light and not getting the light to fix. All because right, I make the representation. When your officer come to KCC at road and traffic, we make the, 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 the representation. The, the represent right. All right, coming down now. I only sorry the national work agency is not here. Well, we don't regulate but the them. O, the, o, the OUR is here. Yes. But I want the OUR to take a message from me that the, the politician, the MP, can't fix the road without the money. But when you should get the money to fix the road, they're not fixing the road properly. Okay. They're not fixing the road properly. So the OUR are begging you, take this to them because... Well, we have no control over the NWA Right, the I council. know that, but I just want the OUR who is responsible so for the me, citizen. Right, so let me, ask, citizen, okay, let me ask JPS quickly to address the issue of the street And line. through my MP... Yes. And, ...and negotiation, things is going to happen. Just be patient. Okay. On the road, because things is going to happen. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank God you, bless Councilor you. Myers. Um, Councilor Myers, um, two things to just to respond to your your um, your the issues you raised with regards to the new street lights. That's a project that's been carried out by a project team, and so they have a plan for when they get to each community. So when they come to this community, this area, they will be doing the entire area. But with regards to the repairs, Councillor Myers, you know from last year we've been trying to work with you. You know we've been trying to work with you from last year to get as many of the lights fixed as possible. You know you missed a couple appointments with us to get those lights fixed. So you know we're trying to work with you to get the ones fixed now. The project, when it comes, it will change out everything. But we'd love if you can get together again with, with Mr. Williams and sort out a proper appointment that we can keep to get the life fixed.